This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get their first two months free. After World War II, the relationship between the US and the USSR was fraught with tension and distrust. The two countries, with their contrasting political and economic systems, were engaged in a fierce competition to show off their superiority and technological might. During the Cold War, they decided to take their rivalry literally out of this world and into space. The space race began in 1957 when the Soviets successfully launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite and the first man-made object to be placed into the Earth's orbit. In response to the USSR's surprising space achievement, the US launched its own satellite, Explorer 1, in 1958. This tit-for-tat went on through the rest of the 1950s and 60s. In the late 60s, America seemed to be lagging behind the USSR. After a series of Soviet successes that included Yuri Gagarin and Valentina Tereshkova being the first man and woman in space, the US set its sights on a more ambitious achievement. In 1969, the US attempted the first lunar landing. The Apollo 11 mission was a success, with Neil Armstrong becoming the first person to walk on the moon. For many people, the US won the space race after this momentous event. But what if it didn't happen, and the US failed instead? That's what we'll examine today. In this episode of the Infographic Show, what if the US lost the space race? Firstly, one possibility is that people would inhabit the moon by now. In a BBC article, space historian Christopher Riley argues that a Soviet landing on the moon could have led to moon colonization. He speculates that not only would the Soviet Union have continued with moon missions, but they might also have built lunar bases. Riley also believes that the Americans would have been compelled to do the same and even to continue to outdo their communist rivals. Both countries did indeed have ambitious plans to create lunar bases. The National Security Archive recently released a declassified government document about Project Horizon, a 1960 study outlining how the United States Army planned to set up a permanent residence on the moon, according to one source. The plans included a state-of-the-art space tractor and the construction of a nuclear reactor on the moon, which would provide electric power for the lunar base. The base would start off as a simple outpost suited for 12 people that contained living quarters, storage rooms, and other areas. They even tried to prepare for astronauts who became mentally unhinged during their stay on the moon by including an isolation area for psychiatric patients and or communicable disease cases in their outpost plans. According to Popular Mechanics, recently released information about the Soviet space program included a 1967 proposal to permanently colonize the moon. Soviet engineers came up with several scenarios that would make colonization possible. One of them involved inventing a Lunar Engineering Machine, or LIM, which was a three-ton rover with multiple capabilities that could be used for the construction of a lunar outpost. Another scenario involved two moon rovers and a 33-foot habitat with two floors and a three to six person capacity. One rover would move soil toward the module, while another would cover it up using a specially built sand thrower. Finally, there was the self-propelled, self-burying habitation module that was supposed to be a cylinder that was 20 feet in length and 12 feet wide. The module would be capable of housing six cosmonauts and it would have have the ability to search for a site with soil soft enough for self-burial, a process that was estimated to take about 4.3 hours. A telescopic airlock would allow the crew to get to the lunar surface. While Riley was right about both countries trying to outdo each other in the space race, he overestimated the power of ambition to overcome the technical and financial obstacles that would have made moon colonization possible for the United States. Defense Media Network provides a good summary of some of the reasons why Project Horizon never materialized. The technological challenges were more difficult than the authors of Project Horizon had thought, and also considerably more expensive. A Manhattan Project scale effort might have worked, but it would have required a huge increase in the US government's expeditions on defense. However, Riley seemed to be correct about the USSR. Russia's plans to colonize the moon were also scrapped, but mainly because of what one article describes as failed Soviet human lunar programs. A Wired article also notes that the program was deemed too expensive and unnecessary in light of the NASA success. If the Soviets succeeded in landing men on the moon first, perhaps they would have had the motivation 
decision to move on to moon colonization next. Number 2. A second possibility is that the US might have tried sending people to Mars by now. If America was not able to beat Russia to the moon, it is highly likely that it would have tried to find another way to outdo the Soviets in the space race. Riley notes that there were designs of methods to get to Mars that might have been put into action in response to a Soviet landing on the moon and there is some evidence to support his observation. A Wired article reports that as early as 1965, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, or MSFC, turned its attention to the scientific tasks astronaut scientists might perform on Mars, and it contracted with AFCO-RAD to study manned Mars surface operations. In 1966, there was an engineering meeting called Stepping Stones to Mars where the AFCO-RAD study leader Paul Swan and some of his colleagues acknowledged that the decision to send men to Mars might be taken for reasons of internal competition, for domestic political considerations, or to stimulate the economy. With the space race continuing on, the US government would have continued to pour money and resources into a manned mission to Mars in the 1970s and beyond. It would have expanded instead of cut NASA's budget, and Congress probably would have funded what a Wired article describes as piloted Mars-Venus flyby missions in 1975 and 1977. It would also not have cut the budget of the Apollo Applications Program, which was NASA's main 1970s piloted program. What might have slowed the US down, however, is the lack of technology to deal with some of the dangers involved with a trip to Mars. According to retired astronaut Chris Hatfield, a long slog to Mars increases the risks of explosions, radiation, starvation, and other problems. Going to Mars would require what Hadfield calls technologies that could mitigate these issues, such as lightweight yet effective shielding, hibernation capsules, and bioregenerative life support systems. He also thinks a new rocket propulsion system would probably be needed to get to Mars because it is much further away from Earth than the Moon is. This technology did not exist back then, and it still does not exist today. NASA cannot even be sure it will meet its current goal of a manned mission to Mars by 2033 because, as Futurism reports, it includes obstacles beyond budget such as figuring out a way to maintain the mental health of Mars astronauts who will essentially be sealed into the space tube for years at a time with no ability for an emergency return once they leave cislunar space. And finally, number three, is the possibility that the development of some useful technology would not have occurred or would have been delayed. If the US simply gave up after USSR's impressive string of space firsts in the 1950s and 60s, the Apollo missions would not have happened. And if the Apollo missions did not occur, we might not be able to enjoy some of the technology that was created because of them. A Telegraph article describes some of the space spin-offs that were developed because of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Imagine what life would be like without modern computer microchips, which descend from integrated circuits used in the Apollo guidance computer. How would hospitals and clinics fare without the CAT scanner, which was first used to find imperfections in space components? And would gamers enjoy playing their favorite video video games without the joystick, which was first used on the Apollo Lunar Rover. It is possible that these technologies could have been developed outside of NASA, but they probably would have taken longer to produce without the urgency caused by the space race. Let's take a quick detour and submerge ourselves into something a little different. Do you have a great idea for a product but don't really know how to launch it? If that's the case, we suggest taking a class on Skillshare called Product Design – How to Launch Successful Products. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in management, marketing, UI UX design, and more. The first 1,000 people to sign up by visiting Skillshare.com slash Infographics33 or by clicking the link in the description will receive two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today. So, do you think the US won or lost the space race? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called US Space Force, What Will It Do? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.